Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large-scale distributed systems. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. I'm David Gilardi, a technical evangelist here at Datastax, and I'm here with Aaron Pletz of Target. All right, so... <laughs> So even though we're here to actually talk about how Target uses Kubernetes, yep. I heard you finally beat out Jonathan Ellis in Stack Over Four Points <laughs> on the Cassandra tag. Yeah. Why don't yeah. you tell us about that? Well, it was, um, <laughs> so, so it, it's, it's kind of funny is that, you know, I'd been contributing on the Stack Overflow tag for a number of years now, and that's actually kind of how I got, you know, how they realized I was on their radar and I became an MVP. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but um, Jonathan was always way ahead of everybody for years, and I happened to see him at the summit a couple of years ago, and I'm like, oh, I'll never catch up with you. He's like, well, you keep working at it, maybe you will, and sure enough, I got him back in May, so. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's Jonathan, if you're watching this. Yeah, that, that right there. <laughs> All right, so why don't you tell us. Tell us a little bit about how Target uses Cassandra on Kubernetes. That's you know. well, actually, it's uh, it's fair. It's a fairly new thing. Okay. Um, our um, in Data Store Services, our orchestration team is actually working on like building a uh, platform that'll kind of help us deploy things like kind of kind of on demand. And Kubernetes is uh, is what we want to use for that. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, the the idea is is that um, you know we'll use like a we'll use like a single deployment process, whether it's going you know like out to the cloud or you know to whatever platform. Um, but right now, we're, we're just starting with our, our internal cloud, actually, on, on OpenStack. Is, okay, so you're doing a private cloud that you... That's right, okay. private cloud, okay. yep. Yep. So it's still in development, but okay. um, we okay. actually did get our, our first um, Cassandra cluster to deploy on it. Uh, it must have been like two weeks ago, okay. I think, and it was, it, it was a big step. You know, we were all really excited, and, um, and yeah, and, I mean, we've, we've spent a lot of time... Um, the, the majority of the work, I'm told, <laughs> is by our, our, data, our uh, you know, platform guys, uh, Jordy... Who gave me the I shirt? I was going to ask by you the about way. the shirt. Yeah. By the way, what is? Yeah, Jordy loves you. What is? Jordy yeah, what is loves this? you. Explain it's, it's, the shirt. <laughs> it's like a salutation on our team, and it all started with with like um, somebody like leaving a meeting and Jordy saying goodbye, I love you. You know, like he's talking to his wife, and then that just kind of went on to the next person who's like, oh, by the way, Jordy loves you. <laughs> so yeah, now we've been saying that for a couple of years. So that's anyway. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> well, okay. So do you, I mean, do you have any? You have any challenges in provisioning storage? Like, what's what's we going on actually that? have had some challenges with okay. um, with persistent storage for it. Um, the majority of the work, as I'm told by Jordy <laughs> and Ryan and Micah, by the way, um, <laughs> is that um, was in working with the uh, the Kubernetes cloud driver yeah. and to get it to actually work with OpenStack and do what we want out there. So um, you know, essentially, what it does is it spins up. It uses like a uh, like an OpenStack cinder block as our back end persistence, okay. and um, it attaches that to the Kubernetes pod, and that's kind of how the, the storage, is, storage is interfaced. And the nice thing about that, too, is that what can happen, and actually we found this out while we were, we were doing some stress testing, you know, good old Cassandra stress. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, really? You're using Cassandra stress? We stress? use Cassandra that's stress. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually wrote a, a bunch of uh, test cases for it. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so we, we, um, we were using Cassandra stress, and... Um, Micah wasn't aware that I was actually doing this at the time, so he was he went ahead and killed one of the pods, and I didn't even notice on the testing side. What wow, happened was awesome. is Kubernetes, because it's part of a replica set in Kubernetes, okay. and Kubernetes realized, oh, hey, you're kind of short a pod there, so, well, you're supposed to have one more, let's build one for you, and oh, you were using this cinder block over here, so let's reattach you, and it never skipped a beat. That's awesome. Uh, that's yeah, totally that was, one of those tests that you're like, that's cool. That's and okay. you know, when we got back and we started talking, and, and we're like, wow, did that really just happen? Okay, well, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was pretty good that it worked out that way. Nice, nice. So, so you talked about, um, you know, using Cassandra Stress actually to do some of your tests. So, yep. What other methods are you using to test out the whole stack? Like, what are you, what are you doing there? Well, um, oh, let's see. In addition to Cassandra Stress, um, you know, I don't know. Am I allowed to talk about other databases? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We, this is. Uh, we should be clear. This is the distributed data show. Is not the not the Cassandra data show. Right. No, you're good. You're good. Talk, please. All right. <laughs> um, so one thing I did is um, I actually used uh, Redis as one of our first deployment 
images that we built okay. um, because Redis actually has an intrinsic latency test built into its CLI. Oh, okay. And you know what that that allows you to do is actually like you know run that and it'll it'll run operations like in memory, CPU cycles, etc. And it'll give you back like what is what is the intrinsic latency on this particular instance that you're deploying to. Okay. And that, and that's what we wanted to do just as kind of a, a baseline to see how it's stacked up against like vanilla OpenStack or yeah. bare metal or even yeah. like my laptop and just kind of see where we were. Okay. And uh, we got really positive tests from that, that. So that's how we went ahead with, you know, okay, well, the next thing, let me design three data models, do a write load and a reload on Cassandra stress and really put this thing through the ringer. Okay. And then, okay, so well, how did the Kubernetes Cassandra like platform handle all of that? Like, it sounds like it was pretty positive. It was great, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, well, I told you about the, the pod being taken down and killed yeah, inadvertently. Yeah, and that, you know, high availability, that was great. Um, in terms of performance, um, it actually was like marginally close to our external cloud. So it, it really did well. Um, we, did, we did not expect that. You know, our, our initial, kind of our, kind of our thesis on it was, hey, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do some testing. And let's just see how far off it is from our external cloud or off from vanilla OpenStack. Yeah. And just kind of see, yeah, what are we giving up when we do this? And, and really, as far as like, you know, external cloud goes, we're not missing much. That's cool. So yeah, yeah. Okay. In some cases, it even beat it, depending on the thread count. So, okay. so yeah, it was, it was really cool. This is going to be kind of a totally loaded question, <laughs> but um, so like overall, like, you know, for those of you, I mean, for anyone really who's worked with distributed databases, who works with containerized systems and that kind of deal, I mean, I've done tons of work with AWS and, and such, and these are great systems. Like there's so much you can do, but oh, a yeah. lot of times yeah. there is a lot of setup, a lot of configuration. Like there's all sorts of little check boxes you need to check off to make it happen. How, <laughs> how was that? Like in your opinion, well, yeah, building the uh, deployment pipeline is is a little tricky. Okay. Um, what we have to do whenever we want to deploy like a um, like a new type of uh, of data store or database is um, you know we have to build like a Docker file. Okay. And then we have to define that you know like all the dependencies yeah. that we want. And um, what happens is that builds us a static image which we can reference inside a Spinnaker, and then we use Spinnaker to go ahead and call Kubernetes, deploy that image, and say, oh yeah, I want five of them by the way. Okay. And, yeah, so that's the initial setup is yeah. yeah, it's a little it's a little involved. Well, once you get it going, once you get it going, it's so easy to yeah, just go ahead and adjust. Okay, so. oh, that's so, great. Yeah. yeah, so I've heard you have a book coming out, <laughs> and I know that yes. those things can be very fun to write, not going to deal. But oh yeah, let's, oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's hear about I, I know book. because I don't I don't have anything else going on in my life. I, I coach my, <laughs> you know I, I, I'm you know I, I run a you know no sequel team, <laughs> which is, you know, on call. We have like 700 Cassandra nodes and we have all these other things. How many people do you have supporting that team? Six. You have six people supporting 700 nodes. And that's just Cassandra. We also have Mongo and then Neo4j and then Redis. And so, yeah, we're, we're a little busy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, also, I also head coach my son's hockey team, which is a <laughs> traveling team. And, you know, those kids are on the ice six days a week. Are they using week. Cassandra? They're not. Oh, no, sorry, they're they're not. Bad. Oh, my kids wear the Cassandra <laughs> shirts at school, and oh, they think that's can... yeah. They get <laughs> asked great. what Cassandra is all the time. It's it's kind of funny. That's funny. So uh, so yeah, I yeah I squeezed my book into my oodles of free time. <laughs> um, but um, it's called um, Seven NoSQL Databases in a Week, and it's by Pack Publishing. So it's the same publishing company that um that Robbie Strickland used for um, Cassandra High Availability. Okay. okay. And uh, they asked me to write the chapters on Redis, Neo4j, and then well Cassandra. That's awesome. All right. So when does the book come out? Um, it's actually coming out in February, so really, really soon. Okay. So that's... yeah, yeah, I'm super excited about that. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you again so much, Aaron Plutz, for being yeah. on the Distributed Data Show. Thanks for having me. This has been awesome. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And we'll see everybody. Take care. Jordy loves you. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on Datastax Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Datastax Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.